I want you to change the way that you think about being overwhelmed. Why do I always get overwhelmed? Oh, I'm so stressed. I got this going on and that going on and I just don't know what to do. I'm doing too much. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Are you overwhelmed or are you out of capacity? When you go over capacity, your mind basically breaks. You're essentially going into an, an, an entire full self-protection mode that drives you into irrational decisions, overreacting, and ending up in a worse off place than where you started. Welcome to Build with Rob. It's your boy Rob Deerdeck, pushing it to the limit on a daily basis, still staying as pure as can be. Pure as can be. No alcohol, no sugar, no, no snacks, nothing but lean meats and vegetables fueling this guy. Um, staying in that, that, that next level that I'm not sure if I'm ever going to leave. Uh, at this point, it's just a way of life. Uh, and it is continually driving all aspects of my existence to a higher and higher level. But recently... I found myself in a position saying, forget all this. Forget all of this. I'm not doing any of this anymore. Why am I doing any of this? Why do, I don't want to like make a podcast anymore. I don't want to write a book. Forget about trying to like share this philosophy. Why, why, am, why am I doing any of this? Just, just do nothing. You've made it. Why even bother? And that, my friends, is irrational, outrageous, unrealistic, bad thinking on my behalf. But it was a real feeling. It was a real feeling that I had. And what, what did I want to do to support that feeling? I wanted to eat pizza and I wanted to drink wine. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I want to do. When, when I get to that level where all of a sudden I don't even like anything that I'm working on, like forget all this, like you've worked too hard to be like, like working on all this stuff. Like why, why you could do whatever you want. Why are you choosing to put yourself in this position? Why that is an irrational mind that's completely out of control. That is trying to protect itself, trying to protect itself because your mind only has a, a limited amount of capacity to process the world around you and everything going on. And so what happens? Like uh, your mind basically collapses on itself and it goes into this sort of protection state. And if you're overwhelmed, your mind just tries to choose all these things that you should stop or quit doing or need to change like uh, in order to get back to feeling uh, balanced again and in a place uh, of operating within the, the, the confines or capacity of your existing mind. And, it, and, it, and the problem is, is it doesn't feel like that. And it, and it certainly didn't feel like that to me years ago when I would be constantly in highs and lows and overwhelmed and, and, and all the things that I was working on, I would love one minute and hate the next. Like now for me, it's so clear that you were just over capacity and continually putting yourself in a position to where you felt overwhelmed on an ongoing basis. And, and I tried to just think like, oh, that's how I live. I'm going to just work really hard till I burn out and then, and then forget all this and I'm going to party hard. And then it's like, why am I doing any of this? That is, that is the epitome uh, of living uh, above capacity in your mind as a way of life. And it's what happens to so many people. But it's still fascinating to me when I think about like, how could I possibly get here? How could I possibly get here? Like I designed my time to be completely balanced. You're talking about a guy that so far in this year has gotten up at five, uh, brain trained, meditated, got in the gym, uh, has not had a sip of alcohol, had a clean diet and uh, took my supplements every single day of this year. 
I have never been more focused, more balanced. My time design continually optimized to the highest level. Again, I am working 25% of my life, spending the majority of time with my uh, wife and family and spending more time than ever um, on my health at 8% and sleeping more than I have so that I'm more recovered and getting better sleep and just being better at life, being better at life. I've never been so optimized. Never been so optimized. I, you know, even even the 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 parts of my life that were already um, built around giving me more peace of mind and strength. The way I built my financial system, I took it to a complete other level. I have a new like multi tiered cash flowing like, uh, you know, financial model system that's eighty percent illiquid real estate and twenty percent ETF dividend stocks and bonds and high yield savings account that essentially has me set for life that I don't have to even worry about anything, and it's a beautiful, beautiful. Yet I still found myself. Over capacity thinking like, why am I doing any of this? Why am I building all this? Like all of these different things that I have like put into place in, in, in an effort to keep my mind balanced and, and always keep my life balanced and always live in the energy and always going from thing to thing that I enjoy. All of that. All of that. And I love recording this podcast. I love working on the book and the philosophy. I, I Now I'm deep in the software working on that. I love that. I love it. But on one Wednesday afternoon, I was like, I don't want to do any of this. I'm sick of all. Why am I doing any of this? You you don't have to do anything. Why are you do like you 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 you're you're doing too much. You need to stop this. Let's quit that. You're doing too in and, and and for me like, I know that so many people go through that on an ongoing basis. I know that so many people, like, all of a sudden get hit one day um, and feel completely overwhelmed and overreact and make all these, like, rash decisions that end up making a much more significant impact on their lives that then drives it to further disorder and drives it to regret that then keeps your mind continually swinging down to, to dwelling or being anger or, or f like, swinging up into worrying about the, the future, never being in a place of balance as I talk about the way the mind works. Um... This happens all the time. And for someone that it doesn't happen to, how could I still get beyond capacity and then my mind collapse at this level? It, it, it's, 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 I was going to say mind blowing, uh, but it's crazy to me to, to think that I still can get there. And it, and it gives me further insight to just how it is even possible and more likely that, that most people get there in the first place. Because, you know, I think, I think number one, you know, I have a pretty, um, you know, deep mind as it relates to the ability to compartmentalize and be able to take on a ton of things and keep them organized and and stay focused on 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 a lot of different things and moving them forward. I think I've built that over time. So I have a substantial amount of capacity and, and some people don't. You know, when I think about my the way that my wife um thinks she just has a limited amount of capacity before she gets overwhelmed. So a handful of things go sideways and boom, she's in overreactive mode, like on, on a, on a nonstop basis that I try to play a part in supporting, uh, because I can see that she's just overwhelmed and she's overreacting and that when she finally gets order back to her mind and, and gets back to a rational way of thinking, that that she'll make the right decision based off of the way that she's feeling and and you know normally i would look oh you're being emotional or oh you're you're overreact i'd give it give all these things that you would title when when someone's feeling that way but now i understand like man it is pure capacity and and some people have less capacity and some people have more capacity i do think capacity 
as a whole is is grown over time. It's like a muscle. You know, the stronger and healthier you are and and the more clear purpose you have, um, you get capacity back. The better and more decisive you are, you have uh, more capacity. There's, there's all these different things that will make up your ability to have more capacity. But being aware of it, in understanding what your capacity is, is essential to, to living a high quality life. You know, it, it's like if you continually get overwhelmed over and over again, it's because you're not aware of your capacity and you just keep adding things and pushing past it. And, and a lot of times there, there are things that you don't even think about, right? Like it's procrastination. Like when you know you got to do something and you're not doing it, it's it's basically taking a portion of that capacity until you handle it and, and get it done. Like a big conversation in your life that you got to have in a relationship or something with a with a family member or friend or, so, you know, a coworker or something that's like now stealing capacity because you're thinking about it on an ongoing basis. You know, it's like you know, emails sitting in your inbox, like a project that you know is due in two weeks uh, and you haven't started yet. Whoa, man, that'll, that'll, that literally is stealing capacity because every time you're, you're trying to focus or be present or work on something, as soon as you, you get out of that moment, boom, you're back into like not creating a better future for yourself, but worrying or thinking about what you've got to do and think about, oh, I got to get on that project. Oh, I got to start that. It's like those type of things that continually are these sort of unseen factors that go against the more obvious like you know you have all this work stuff you got to do or you're you're you, you've got kids and you got job and you got obligations and responsibilities to different things that you've had and taken on and now it's like you're going from one thing to the next and then you're super exhausted from going one thing to the next and you just want to chill so you watch TV and have a drink and leads to two drinks and then you get a bad night's sleep and sleep in late and now you're in this sort of chaos again. You know, you look at it as like, oh, it's my life and this is what life did to me. But the truth is, like, by not having order uh, to your overall way of being and then allowing yourself to continually get driven over capacity, you feel constantly overwhelmed, you know? And, and for me, again, it's like, um, you know, no part of me should ever be like, I, <laughs> I want to quit all this. Why am I doing any of this? Like, it's, it's nuts to me that I could even have the thought because I don't even have like, like, I don't even do negative thought experiments. I don't waste any of my time or energy um, going through developing negative thought experiments um, for, for an irrational outcome or a, re, a, re, a irrational scenario in the future that I'm trying to prepare myself for. I think that's what a lot of people do in, in, in sort of the negative self-talk land. You know, a negative self-talk is one of the, the, the biggest drainers of capacity there is. So rather than working on things that you need to rectify or uh, need to handle to clear up and give you back capacity, you're spending time and energy thinking through all these negative scenarios and negative scenario planning, which in turn is just stripping you of energy and capacity. So when something comes into your life that you actually have to, to step in and handle it, uh, you immediately are overwhelmed and overtaken by your entire life's disorganization. Um, because you have wasted so much of your capacity on things that are doing nothing to serve you getting to feeling better about your day, your week, your month, your year. And that's really what you're trying to do, you know? And, and you know, when I, when I talk about these things on sort of a continual basis, and for, for people that listen to the show a lot, it's like I'm always trying to make sense of them myself on an ongoing basis. So it's like I want and as they get clear, as they get more clear to me, I want to be able to articulate it through this platform so that you can just just hear it from another lens and think about it and how you can apply it to to your life. Because if it's 
I know if, if, if I'm hitting capacity and then get these irrational thoughts for the death that I operate at, like it's, it's, it is the truth of how dangerous it is, you know? And for me, you know, I'm, I know exactly where it came from, right? Because of the fact of how optimized I am and, and how disciplined that I have been and how clear and how my entire existence has lived with such intent, I can tell you exactly what happened to me. I, I can tell you that, you know, hired a new CMO and, and a big onboarding process of creating um, a, a lot of the, the core work that we've got to do over the next few years to develop this overall philosophy and then bringing on the full team to be, begin to develop the software. Now, now you're adding these two big projects that require a ton of mind share into an already existing uh, system of, you know, um, managing my core business, the portfolio business. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of a, an, another big exit. It's all of these things compiled together. And then I got sick. And then I got sick. Now, physically, my capacity and my ability to think sharply began to deteriorate. And then um, I'm starting to make irrational decisions. And then I'm, I, I am getting bad sleep. And then I, 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 you know, have one night of terrible sleep. I'm feeling sick, all, all these new things that I have taken on, and then I go straight into a hardcore work day after a shoot day, and every single one of those meetings that I have is off, and I feel like I'm basically, uh, you know, off as, as sort of the person driving all of these, and I'm driving everybody into chaos, and I'm just thinking, why, I don't even want to be in this meeting, like, and at 2.45, I just said in the middle of the meeting that like, man, I'm, I'm just, I am being like irrational and unclear and negative about even what we're all working on. And I'm doing it just a disservice. Like I can feel myself like saying to myself, like, I don't, like, why are you even doing this? And I know that I'm over capacity at 2.45 on Wednesday. And boy, what did I want to do? Man, I just wanted a couple glasses of wine and a pizza. That's it. Because that's like when I get to that state, that is like how I satisfied that state is like this irrational, crazy thing. I got to numb myself. I got to numb myself so I get back control because the only way to get back control when you get over that edge, when your mind is, is trying to fix this dysfunction that you've put it under, is to numb it. You know, a Netflix, a, you know, uh, food, uh, alcohol, you know, it, it's like all these, that, that, that was what I felt like I needed at 2.45 on a Wednesday. But instead... I went and picked up my kids, took my wife to the movies, and got to sleep at 8 o'clock that night and just stopped thinking about everything, stopped trying to organize into my mind, and then slept for eight and a half hours. And, at the, and when I woke up the next morning, I had full and complete clarity on what I needed to do to rectify that I had gotten into this position and I just began to take action uh, to, to get things back in order and get myself fully back into a balanced mind state. And, and for me, it's, it's not a matter of uh, like, did I think that I was, you know, going to make a decision and uh, stop doing all this stuff? No. Because I have the awareness and I'm so like highly optimized and understand the way that I think that I, I was able to look at the, what I was thinking and, and how incredibly unusual it is and, and knowing that like, man, you can't even stop this. You're aware of it. You're going through it, yet you can't even stop the feeling. It, it is literally like a primal protective mechanism that forces your mind to begin to like take drastic decisions to remove the things that have overwhelmed your mind. And, and I knew that that is not 
um, what I needed to do that I actually needed to, to, to give my time myself the time and the space, uh, to allow my mind to calm down and then regroup the following day and reorganize. I knew I wasn't going to do it that afternoon. Like I had already drifted too deep into that feeling in, in to me, the feeling was so rich and so real that like I I still look at like when I think of anybody else who isn't able to 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 be that aware and have that much sort of discipline and optimization in their existence how you know you could very well just be like all right I'm just dead in that like you know let this I don't want to do the software anymore let's just dead that's too many things like it's that that type of overreacting which then you would regret in the future is really just what I want uh, people to think about when you think about why you're overwhelmed and and how it is most likely due to to your capacity and and what can you do to continue to be aware of that capacity but then ultimately build your life in a way that you just don't allow yourself um to get over capacity in, in, in for me, I know that it happens from time to time and I just keep trying to, to add new systems and solutions to make sure that it doesn't happen. But again, completely out of my control was the fact that now I got physically sick and then like, I just like lost this ability to make sharper, realer decisions. And then when you're doing as much as I am doing and kind of staying in this flow state, like when you, uh, when something significant comes in and disrupts your, your overall well being like that, it strips you of capacity, but y- you're not afforded the ability to just stop everything um, because you still think, oh, I can continue to push through this in, until your mind tells you that you can't, you know, and, and it's a it's a super interesting thing to live through on the meta side for me personally and in, in knowing that like, man, you have to. Um, realize that, hey, when, when you get sick, you can't just power through it. You got to give yourself a chance to recover and you can't like get a really, really bad night's sleep and be feeling sick and think that you're just going to like fight through the day. Like you really have to make the adjustments to allow yourself to get back into a, a level place. But But I'm thankful that I've grown over the years and gotten to a place where I understand it well enough to know that, hey, you know, you want to avoid this at all costs and and ultimately know how to course correct when I begin to feel it rather than in the past, I would just go to pizza and wine. I would go to pizza and wine and then it would compound for a few days a week and then I would be like feeling better again, but making no progress and then then sort of back to where I got to I got to regroup and start over again. You know, and, and, and I just think so many people like go through it on an ongoing basis, but what you just cannot do, what you cannot do is continuously allow yourself to be overwhelmed on an ongoing basis. If you just continually get overwhelmed, then, then you really, truly are doing too much and that you are uh, blowing past your capacity and now you have forced yourself, your mind and your way of being into a more irrational protective state that's going to lead to bad decisions that you end up regretting. You can't let that happen. You can't let that happen. You got to get better and better at understanding your personal capacity and, and monitor it and build your life around making sure that you're uh, taking care of the things that are stealing mind share that you're procrastinating on, uh, the things that are bothering you that you need to handle, the things that end up in that mind of yours that shouldn't be there when you should be able to focus on the present or creating a better future. That, my friends, is when you truly master your own capacity. And look, I believe I've done it. And I still hit the pizza and wine edge. I still get there. Uh, but but I don't stay there and I don't have the pizza and wine. I get a good night's sleep, recoup, recover, and, and get back into this beautiful, harmonious, high-quality existence that I love enjoying on a daily basis that I wish for every single one of you. Uh, take that to heart. Appreciate you all, of course. Like, subscribe, wherever you listen. 
Uh, feel free to hit us up on all the socials, whatever it may be. Comment on the videos. Let us know it, how you're living this life of yours and in, in, in what aspects of, of the philosophy are helping you shape yourself into a more ideal version of yourself. Until, until next time, you know you got to have that vision. You got to have that plan. You got to be the one to make it happen. See you next time. See it, believe it, do it.